part three of what you need to know now. My name is Dave Custon. I'm one of the co-founders of Content Bacon. We're talking with Abe, principal of Stafflink. Um, how you doing, Abe? I'm doing great. How you doing today, Dave? I'm good. You're, I'm well. Your, uh, your COVID beard is, is looking very good. Yeah, it's in protest. I'm not going to shave it until, uh, until either we've resolved this whole COVID thing or the Panthers win the playoffs. One of those oh. two. Well, I, I'm pretty sure I know what will come first. <laughs> <laughs> it could be here for a while, either way. <laughs> right. Okay. So today we're going to talk more about PPP and some of the related issues to PPP. By the way, um, we got our PPP approved and, and funded last week, so it's very, uh, very excited for that. Thank you. And I guess I'm sharing that to let people know who are watching. It does happen. It's happening with small businesses. Um, so, you know, if, if you're going through that process, keep going. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, let's jump right into it. Um, when, you know, once you get approved and it gets funded, when can you use the funds? Um, well, you know, just, just to go back to what you were saying about, you know, it's not quite the painless process that, um, that, you know, the members of Congress had, had hoped for. Um, and that's because a lot of the liability and a lot of the process was left in the hands of banks uh, and banks have their processes and, and, you know, they knew at the end of the day, they were going to be accountable for the results. So that's kind of why things have been dragging along. Um, now to answer your question, once you do get funded, you have eight weeks from the time of being funded to use the funds. Okay. So from that moment on, from the time that you're funded, and, and you have to be funded in one at one time, it's not multiple times over the, over the course of a period. Some people were asking to be funded over the course of weeks to extend that period of time. It doesn't work mm -hmm. that way. From the time of first funding, eight weeks forward is when you have to extend the funds. So you have to, you have to use all the funds within that eight week period? Correct. And what happens if you don't? They pull them back? Well, no, then, then it's not the forgivable portion. I, I mean, see. Yeah, okay. you, you would return the funds. Okay, so that, that's a great segue to the next, really three questions, which I'm gonna to try to put together. So talk a little bit about forgiveness. How, what, do you, what do you have to do to, to meet the forgiveness regulation? Um, when is it going to re, be repaid? And maybe, maybe separately we'll talk about IRS, but, you know, because I'm seeing some things yeah. recently from the IRS that are confusing, contradictory, but talk about forgiveness and, and repayment. Yeah. Um, okay. So with respect to um, forgiveness, we really don't have the guidance on it yet. The SBA still has not, they keep promising uh, every week we hear next week, uh, the guidance will be issued. It has not yet been issued. So there's no real specificity. What we do know is that the funds that are utilized for the stated purpose under the act will be forgiven. In other words, funds that are utilized for payroll, payroll costs, and other business costs that were specified in the act, like rent, utilities, mortgage interest, mm -hmm. those, if the funds are expended on those things, then those funds will be forgiven. Okay. That's what the act says. But as we've learned, what the act says and how it's <laughs> interpreted by the agencies is not necessarily the same thing. So until the SBA issues their guidance, we really don't know. Yeah. Um, so, well, I'm, and I'm sorry, what was the rest? So the, so the follow-up to that is, uh, well, it's really two parts. If, it's, if you meet the certain criteria, it's forgiven, so there's nothing to repay. But right. if you don't meet the, meet the, the guidelines for, for forgiveness – what does the repayment uh, process timeline look like? Yeah, and I'm glad, okay, there was one other part of the repayment um, criteria that I do want to focus on. The act is very specific that you have to maintain your level of payroll. The whole point was to keep people employed right. uh, when there was this concern about cash flow. So you've got to keep um, the number, there are two tests essentially for whether or not the, uh, repayment, the payments will be forgiven. Uh, one is the number of employees. You have to have the same number of employees that you had over the, the average number over the prior year or the, or the period that was utilized for the loan application. And your rate of pay or the, the gross wages have to be 
uh, within 75% of what they were on the loan application. Okay. Got so, it. Now with respect to, um, again, we just don't know um, about the repayment or what that period is going to look like. Okay. So uh, last, last piece there is IRS uh, guidance tax and taxable status. <clears throat> I saw something either this week or last week um, with respect to some, some regulation from IRS that had me think, how can the IRS dictate anything, you know, that a bank, a bank is underwriting and approving it and they're managing and regulating. I, I don't recall the exact thing that I read, but it, it had me think that it's like, how, how are they able to impact that? So maybe you could just talk a little bit about what's happening right now with IRS and, and sure. all that. Yeah, no, the IRS um, issued a little bit of a bombshell last week when they issued guidance, uh, guidance 20-32. And what that guidance, it, it's very clear when you read the act, the language in the act itself, in the CARE Act, under the PPP, specifically states that funds that are received and forgiven will not be income for purposes, for, for the, uh, for income, uh, I'm Got sorry, it. not for tax purposes. So mm -hmm. it's not deemed to be income for tax purposes. Mm -hmm. Very, very straightforward, very clear intent what the legislature was trying to do there. Um, so the IRS came in and they're not dealing with the PPP unto itself. They're dealing with the tax implications of the PPP which obviously they have, that's their, that's their, their right. wheelhouse. So what they came out and said was, well, it's not income. However, we have this other rule out there that's settled law that says you can't deduct an expense that is associated with income that is not taxable. With income, that's not income. <laughs> Correct. So, <laughs> okay. or revenue that's not taxable. So, right. so, so in, in, in layman's terms, if I heard it correctly, what you're saying that they're saying is there's some issue or regulation or they have to pay attention to something around. You can't deduct uh, mortgage interest if you used free money to make that mortgage payment, essentially. Precisely. That's okay. exactly. So pretty good, pretty good, huh? Yeah, not bad for a layman. No, that, that, that's great. So yeah, in essence, what they've said is, yeah, we're not taxing the income, but you can't deduct the expense. Got it. Yeah. So in essence, the PPP just lost, if you're at a 40% tax bracket, you're only getting 60 cents on the dollar mm -hmm. for what you were counting on to continue to run your business. Yeah. So the implication on small business is pretty immense. Um, especially because now in order to get any forgiveness, you're tied to these revenue numbers. So you're at a loss. I mean, either way, you're losing money. So for some businesses, does it make sense to, to not meet the regulations? And then this is a loan and then you can take the mortgage expense deduction, correct? Right. But the answer is you, you end up the same either way. Okay. Um, so, I would say that every business needs to evaluate it for themselves. Mm -hmm. However, um, I have seen a couple of businesses that said they were going to return the money rather than, than spend it. But I, you know, it's still 60 cents on the dollar is better than zero cents on the dollar. Yeah. Also there, there is talk. Um, what, what the IRS was signaling was that this is a legislative fix that needs to happen. And there is talk of the legislature fixing it. So and I do think okay. they will because the intent was for it to uh, be a dollar for dollar exchange. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Let's talk about uh, return to work, which, you know, so many people are excited to do some, yes. maybe not so many are, some aren't, some, some are, um, uh, scared to do that, certainly depending yeah, sure. on, on the type of work environment. But uh, with respect to your your clients and, and, and the others that are out there that, that are, are listening, um, when can they reopen? Uh, let's start there. When can they reopen? Well, everything depends upon where you reside. You know, we have, you know, we have uh, employees in about 37 states now. So every state's a little bit different. 
And then even within the states, every, uh, every county is different. As, as we know here in, in South Florida, um, Florida has been open for two weeks now. Mm-hmm. And South Florida is still shut down and will be, uh, you know, for Broward County at least will be until next week. So you just have to be aware of what the, um, what the is happening at the city, county and state level. Know what's going on in your particular state, where you operate and wh- what county you operate. Okay. Um, and if they have not opened up, then you still have to uh, meet the test of being an essential business. Got it. Okay. Um, what are, uh, you know, what are your, uh, what do you, what or how are you advising your, your clients on how they keep their employees safe? What does the work environment look like? What are some of the new considerations there? The, the, the entire workspace is going to be impacted by this. Everything has changed. So, um, some of the things that you have to keep in mind if you're bringing people back into the office is you need to provide a safe environment. And the whole idea of what a safe environment is has changed uh, pretty dramatically. Mm -hmm. Um, Many places, there's guidance out there. The uh, CDC has guidance, OSHA has guidance. And some of the things, for example, that OSHA has suggested is um, you have to um, have healthy hygiene practices within the the, uh, office. Um, intensified cleaning and disinfecting of the office environment. You still want to maintain social distancing. Even, even if people are, are coming in, you have to make sure they ha- there's enough space for them to, social, to be socially distant. Yeah. Um, you've got to still be providing the opportunity for telework. Um, for example, you mentioned some employees who are still not comfortable coming into the office. You still probably want to provide telework. If somebody uh, is reporting that they don't feel good, you probably would rather them uh, either take paid time off or you know stay home. Whatever, yeah. don't come into the office. Um, the use of shared spaces, the use of shared items, you want to restrict that, uh, avoid it if at all possible, um, and and obviously you want to constantly train and make people aware of. Um, you know, all of these, uh, these uh, considerations. In addition, you know, the CDC has additional uh, recommendations, guidance. Um, you, want, um, you want routine and daily health checks for your employees. Um, monitor, app, you, you, you need to be really flexible with people's schedules. Yeah. You know, you may have to start uh, letting people work different hours to keep that social distancing opportunity. Uh, you need an action plan if somebody does uh, test positive for mm-hmm. COVID-19. Yep. Um, and you just want to stay in communication, see what's happening at the local level. Some of this, and I'm going to be totally candid, Dave, you know me pretty well. I, yep. I look at some of this stuff and I kind of roll my eyes and think it's a complete overreaction. And while that may be true, um, some of this is also practicing defensive employment. And um, there's a lot of talk out there yeah. about some C- C- CYA stuff going on. A lot of CYA, exactly. Um, I believe that, that coronavirus and COVID-19 is going to be um, fertile grounds for lawsuits, yeah. both by employees and and customers. Yeah. Um, so doing this and showing that you have taken all these precautions is really a defensive measure. Yeah. There is yeah. talk in Congress of, uh, at the Senate at least, of creating some employer immunity or business, small business immunity from lawsuits. But, you know, I don't know how that gets through the House. There, it, yeah. that, it, it's a long way from actually becoming law. And yep. therefore, I've rethought a lot of my approach to this specifically as a defensive measure. So, yeah, I, I, I think that that's very much in play. Yeah. Okay. But one All more right. thing, this, yeah. and this kind of harkens back to the PPP, but um, when you open up your, your office and you have employees who say they don't want to come back for whatever reason, you know, they just say, hey, thanks for the offer to bring me back, but I'm not interested. 
um, that does not count against you um, when it comes to either the wages or the employee numbers when seeking forgiveness under the PPP. That's good to know. That's probably very useful to know. So la last question, um, how, how are your clients able to count on you right now for, for continued questions around all this? Plus, you know, when, when, when their employees start coming back, how do they deal with sick leave and employee benefits and pay time off? And, you know, how does all that work now? Um, what, what can your clients count on you for um, right now? Uh, my HR department is, is completely involved in helping our clients prepare for what they need to do in order to start bringing the employees back. Um, we are helping them on the risk management side with some of the things that we've just talked about and getting a little bit of a deeper dive into what all of that means, what they can do, what resources are available to our clients um, you know, to, to tap into. In addition, I mean, just the tracking of all of this stuff. You know, again, we not only are the consultants that help them implement these processes, but we also help them track it. Our, our technology um, helps them track it. Um, with respect to benefits, benefits is a huge issue as well. All of those things we navigate, we manage, and not only do we manage it, we actually implement those things for our clients. Okay, awesome. Abe, thank you. Uh, thank you for being you. Thank you for being a resource uh, for my company, as well as all the other companies that you work with and, and all the ones that are out there that, that uh, have yet to work with you, but uh, you're, you're being a great resource. So I appreciate that. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. You're welcome. See you on the next one. You got it.